there, it's Kevin with the Rogue Market here with this week's episode of the Rogue Roundup, a series in which I give my picks on Legacy, Standard, Commander, Popper, and even Modern for cards that I think are going to go up. Starting off this week, we have Legacy. For Legacy, I'm going to choose Monastery Mentor because I like its price point more than anything. Monastery Mentor is a Mythic from Fate Reforged, which means there is a lot of high supply for this. If you're looking at Mythics comparatively to other sets, Fate Reforged is one of the most open sets of all time. However, we've seen Mythics from Fate Reforged like Ugin go above the $40 mark, and Monastery Mentor is currently sitting around the $78 mark. If you can get in at under $7, I like this card because it is starting to see a lot of play in Legacy. Most of the Miracle decks will at least pack a few either in the main or in the side, and we have a few new decks from Monastery Mentor that have come out of the woodwork, one being a Karn Artifacts Monastery Mentor deck, as well as an Arclight Phoenix Monastery Mentor deck. So Monastery Mentor sitting at its near all-time low is pretty promising for this card just for the legacy demand. However, I've always thought this card is playable. It, the power level is definitely there for Modern, and it's just a matter of time where I think we will see a breakout deck with Monastery Mentor in Modern. And this card is also quite popular in Commander. So for those factors, I like the price point right now for Monastery Mentor before it starts to have that inevitable trajectory up. Moving on to Popper. Popper, I'm going to choose Echoing Decay. Popper's in a state where there's basically just two decks. There is Blue Black Delver and then decks that can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Blue Black Delver. However, those decks do have a little bit of hole for Echoing Decay. Most of them tend to be either running multiples of small creatures or they tend to run tokens and Echoing Decay is a very good removal spell for both of these. Echoing Decay is from Darksteel, so the supply is actually quite low as this is an old card in the scope of things and the price has been moving quite significantly in the past few weeks currently the market price is around 50 cents for this card so if you can get anywhere if you can get in anywhere under 50 cents i think that is a steal this is one of those cards that i definitely go check your local bulk bins it probably will still be in the local bulk bins and even if we do have a banning of gush or foil that takes away the blue black delver from its dominance i still like this card because it's a very splashable card for many decks uh the red black Discard deck tends to run a few copies as well as many of the white black decks or even green black decks occasionally or just mono black will run Echoing Decay. So for those reasons I think it's going to hold its price point. It might be a difficult reprint. They don't tend to reprint cards like these in future sets. I think the power level of this card is pretty substantial. So for that reason I do like Echoing Decay going forward which I do think it will have a double up within the next few weeks or months. Moving on to standard. Now, this is one of a risky pick. I'm going to be a little bit risky here and gamble with Angel of Grace. Angel of Grace, when it was spoiled, was one of the most expensive mythics out of Ravnica Allegiance. However, it was it just continues to fall. It does see play in a few Orzhov Angel lists as well as Bant Reclamation decks. And even a few you white control decks will throw it in the sideboard or just have one in the main as a win condition. However, I think post rotation, we lose a lot of cards that compete with this in this slot. And the power level is definitely there as a 5 4 flash. Uh, flying creature with a little bit of an upside with being able to, to X out from your graveyard as well as it can save you for a turn or two. So I like Angel of Grace if you can really lowball the price. Currently I've been picking these up for the $2 mark and surprise surprise people are actually selling these to me for about 2 bucks. I think that sometime in its life in standard this card will see a tier 1 deck and the price will significantly go up. Whether that be $6, 8 $10 of true value I think getting in at 2 is a smart smart choice at this point. Again this is a bit of a game it could continue to go down. It could continue to not see any significant amount of play like one of or two of in a few decks. And the rotation of angels might actually solidify this not seeing play. However, I, if I'm a gambling man, and I am, I think that there will be a time point when Angel of Grace will shine. And that will be the time to sell out of this card. Next up, we have Modern. Modern, I have chosen Street Wraith for three reasons. Because it is a four of in three of the top decks right now. It goes in the Grixis Shadow as well as Living End, and it even goes in various Hollow One decks. So Street Wraith is seeing a ton of play right now in Modern. Add to the fact that Grixis looks to be the best deck at the moment. It has a lot of game versus a lot of the other graveyard decks or other what we call degenerate decks. 
as it can play both the aggro and control role in those matchups. And Street Wraith is just a free card. It adds to the count for Tarmogoyfs in the graveyard. It adds to the count for, for getting life total down for Death Shadow or any other thing that requires card types like Delirium in the graveyard. It's something that is very good in cards like in decks like Hollow One or Death Shadow, where it's just a or, or Hollow One or Living End, where it's just a free card to dig for what you want. Uh, casting early hollow ones or digging for living end and then getting back a 3-4. This card is not going anywhere. It also sees play in formats uh, such as Vintage and Legacy and those dredge-based strategies or those, those, those base strategies where you can just cycle it away to find your cards. So Street Wraith, I know it was printed in Masters 25 and, and does have relatively high supply, but we've seen cards very similar to this that see as much play as this really start to spike up. So yeah, it's it's an expensive uncommon slash common, but I think the days of, of Street Race being under $3 are going to be a, a thing in the past very shortly, and you need to pick up your copies now for an inevitable double up. That leaves us this week with Commander. Commander is an interesting format. We saw cards from Ravnica Allegiance really spike up the value of cards that are contained in their decks. Tesa is one of the such cards that spiked up a ton of different cards, mainly Athreos. And there's a card just like Athreos that is going in Nikki of the Old Ways, and this is Xenagos. Xenagos is a mythic from Born of the Gods. Born of the Gods is another one of those sets during the, the height of magic where this was opened like crazy. But there's a lot of new blood entering into the commander scene, and the Born of the Gods is actually getting old enough to where Christ prices are increasing. And so just like Atheros, I expect Xenagos to have a double up and possibly even a triple up. So right now we have a huge spread between buy lists and what you can buy this at TSG market price, and that is going to evaporate quickly. I think if you can get in at Xenagos around $10, $10 mark, you're going to have a double up within the next month, as Nick of the Old Ways seems to have solidified itself in a very popular commander. It feels very much like Animar or other big mana decks, and Xenagos, of course, is going to go in that type of deck. Xenagos goes in a a range of other decks throughout Commander's history, from Voltron Commanders to Big Mana Commanders to basically any red-white creature-based deck, you can legitimately throw Xenagos in the deck. Xenagos does see play in other formats, like Modern in Tooth and Nail, and other combo-based strategies, as this makes uh, the Emrakul a one-shot with Xenagos, or any other card you can, you can definitely go and one-shot people with doubling its power, and hopefully giving it haste through other methods. Anyway, that is my list for this week for the Rogue Roundup. I hope you enjoyed this list of cards from this week's episode of the Rogue Roundup. Be sure to check back next week. Or if you're a fan of this type of financial content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. What are your five cards you're going to be investing in? Be sure to check out my other channel over at roguedeckbuilder.com for our weekly Market Monday episode. Thanks for watching. <laughs>